Hey, can we play? I got some squirrels and some boy pops. You can have some if you let us play. Why don't you leave me alone? See what happens when you try to be nice. I got some BB bats too, but now you ain't gonna get none, freak. Yeah, Demi wants no candy. I said I don't, now leave me alone. Well, we don't wanna play no sissy jacks. No how, do we guys? Nah, we don't wanna play no sissy ass jacks. Leave me alone. Yeah, and take that. Yeah, I think if you out here, if you get in trouble, we're gonna get a weapon. This ain't no fun in your house, it's stupid. Man, I don't get no weapons. Besides, this is fun. Look at her, she looks so stupid anyways. Her old man's a drunk, too. He ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, now look at her. Ain't got nobody to play with. Can we play now, Annie Black? I'm gonna do the head start to five, and then you're gonna get it. Damn shame what happened at the lake last night. Yeah. And fool them went and blew his own head off. I tell you, it just don't make sense. White folks go to killing they sales for nothing. And a good hunting dog, too. Yeah. I ain't so sure he did. Man, what you talking about? There's the only one there. And the dog damn sure didn't do it. Buddy, you still want that pie? Only one slice left. Back now? Yeah. All I'm saying is a man don't usually go out hunting and kill himself and his dog. That don't add up. Not with hunting rifle know-how. Got to get all the details. Well, it sound pretty cut and dry to me. You've been known to be wrong before, Earl Phillips. Yep. Is that all you got to say about it? Yep. 
Y'all come out in the wash. Man like that, rich white man. Found to be some investigation. You could bet your ass on that. Now look now, the fool blowed his own head off. No telling what that cracker was into. Who said he had to be into something? Like I said, we got to get all the facts. There's forces at work we don't always understand. Oh well, yeah, he was the mayor. He had all the ins and outs and what you're not. Hey, you know what? You know, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna drink my coffee and be glad that it wasn't me. Yep. Probably best till we get more information on Sure we ain't heard the last of it. Bet you a fat man on that. Billy. Sally. Professor Thork. Professor Thork. Class started 10 minutes ago. I've never known you to be late, yeah, so. Yeah, okay, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. He was a good friend, Viv. We'll miss him. You're Walter. Will there be anything else, ma'am? No, thank you, Dan. Vivian needs to be alone now. She needs a little rest. If we could give her a little room, please. So I think it's time for everyone to go now. That's good. Vivian, take two of these. They'll help you relax. Now, Vivian, I don't recommend you doing that. It'll knock you out like a horse. Well, isn't that the point, Doctor? I'm gonna leave these with you. Take two every four hours. If you don't start feeling any better, give me a call. Mother, can I get you anything? I know that's a silly question. It's okay, son. I'm fine. I just need to be alone for just a little while. Okay. I'll leave you to yourself. But I will be right back as soon as I'm done at the office. If you need anything, anything at all. Okay, son. You go do what you have to do. I'll be fine. Okay. Well, I will be back in two hours and 43 minutes. And I'll have a bag of orange slices for you. I know how much you love them. You are a fine son. What did I ever do to deserve? and now moving into North America in the Pacific Northwest. Sasquatch, Bigfoot, as he's more commonly known. Atlantic Northeast, the New Jersey Devil, for which the National Hockey League team is named. And West Virginia features the Mothman as one of our uh, more regional urban What legends. about Black Annie? We used to hear about her a lot when we were kids. Oh, yes, Miss Alexander, Black Annie. I like that initiative. As a matter of fact, I think we should make that part of our next assignment. Love that suggestion. I want you guys to go out, see what you can find out, come back, tell us what you know, and we'll do our own investigation. Well, we don't really know anything much about her except we were told not to go down dark alleys at night because Black Annie would get us. And that is why you investigate, because you don't know. So you have your assignment and you can thank Miss Alexander. Yeah. Go out and hit the bricks, see what you can come up with. Ask some old folks if you have to. That's it. I'll see you on Monday. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. There's something that you're not telling me. Is there something wrong, Edgar? Wrong? What makes you think there's something wrong? Well, I have never seen you drink. And in our house. There's nothing wrong, Lucinda. Now, God damn it, let it be. Oh my, and I have never heard you take the Lord's name, Edgar. Two, three, four, here.
dudes is knocking on your door. Black Annie, that's for sure. Five, six, seven, Black Annie did not go to heaven. Eight, nine, ten, you better stay in, or it will be a sin. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then Mr. By the Lake, if you see What is it, honey? Nothing loose. Going back to sleep now. Edgar? I thought I heard something. Just going back to sleep now. Honey, is there something I can do or get you? I get the feeling that somehow that time has passed, Lucy. Edgar? Deacon Ted, I need you to cancel choir rehearsal tonight. No, no, I, I'm fine. I, I just need some time to be alone here at the church. Plus, you, you can't improve on perfection. <laughs> God bless you, too. Hello? Hello? Damn it, who's this calling me? It's me, Edgar. Oh, Lucy, I, this sermon, I... Yes, I'm. Uh huh. Good. Damn it, Lucinda! I told you I'm stuck in a sermon. Ooh, <laughs> Give me. That's two now. They say things happen in threes. I wonder who's gonna be next. Yep. Don't quite make sense, though. I ain't like the Reverend. Why? Because he black? There goes your theory about white folks killing themselves. I ain't so sure, though. Sure about what? I think it's something else. Man, you don't know what you talking about. You're just trying to stir some shit up. The shit didn't already been stirred up, Earl Billups. We got two men that done died under strange circumstances. And if you believe what you say, somebody gonna die tonight. Or real soon. 
It ain't about me, but what my gut tells me. <laughs> Sound like some bullshit to me. Bullshit? Man burned himself up in his own touch. Not a speck of damage to it. Laugh now. See who be laughing in the moment. Yeah. Oh, shut up, man. You talk too much. I'm truly sorry, Miss Wright. There's anything we can do. It's all right, Charlie. We all in the same boat now. Yes, ma'am. Sweet boy. <laughs> this is just too much, Vivian. We haven't even had a view for Charles and now Edgar. What would make him do such a horrible thing? We gotta stick together through this thing, Lucinda Wright. You hear me? Because whatever is happening does not appear to be an accident to me. What are you saying, Vivian? You think somebody did this? Why? Did you know that Marvella had no pre-existing eye problems before she just woke up mysteriously blind the other day? I know it's awful, but she was a little, you know, overweight. Now, it could have been diabetes or something else that they missed. Did you ever wonder why none of us had any more children after our first? I never really thought about it, why? Oh, yes, you have. It was October the 13th. 1973. Remember the night when Charles and Edgar Holton Bundy showed up here late at your house? I mean, surely they Come on over here, Reverend. We gotta do is forget this little thing ever happened. Things be back the way they was before. Everybody know they beat that gal. God knows what else. Damn it, Holton. She was just a child. Was she a member of your church, Reverend? Because you got yourself a fine congregation. Cadillacs in the parking lot every Sunday and such. Of course, now, uh, poor folk must go to church on the East End because they don't worship with a good Reverend. That doesn't have anything to do with it. Oh, it don't, dude. No. Well, now, what if people was to say it was your boy who did it in the first place, huh? How'd you like that little rumor circulating around the congregation? I say now, Reverend, uh, how much you pulling in in tires every week, huh? Because this show is a fine house you and the missus got here on Rose Hill. I hear the... Sheriff Department is collecting for some athletic equipment for some of the boys' club. Yeah, no. This ought to do nicely, Reverend. Be able to buy all sorts of equipment with this. Now, I don't need to remind you, that boy of yours, he better not squeal a peep about any of this. How do you want to handle that? You have yourself a good night, Reverend. Come on, Charlie. Come here, boy. Lucinda, you go on back in the house now. We'll be in in a minute. Go on now. Close the door. Now, son. God will forgive you for what you have done. This was his will. As long as you keep this between us, everything will be fine. Do you understand? Not a word to anyone, not even your mother, ever. OK, I won't. Now, Lucinda, the boy got himself into some mischief, but I took care of it. That's all I'm going to say about it. Now, go on back in the house now. Go on and close the door. You too, son. Get to bed. Yes, sir. I'll be in directly. Surely they must have been here. They were most certainly at my house. 
My God. Now, I do remember that. But what does that have to do with this? I don't know, Lucy. But I do know that something happened to a little girl that night. And that little girl has never been seen or heard from again. What are you saying? There's nothing to be said at this point. But I get a funny feeling that this thing is not over. What's not over? Vivian, you really starting to frighten me. Now, what are you saying? Lucinda, that little girl's mother was from somewhere down south. And they say that she was into voodoo and black magic and everything. Hey, Ava! Look, I don't like you doing this no more. It's crazy. All this mumbo jumbo bullshit. What is it good for anyway? Are you listening to me, woman? <laughs> so you think I did all this because of you? You think I need you? Huh? Can't take care of myself? I don't need nothing or nobody. As long as I got this and this. can fuck with that. Oh. Ping! 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 Oh God, hey, look, hey, 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 and then the little girl disappears. And now this. You're talking about superstition, Vivian Warren. At a time like this, my husband was a respected minister. And we didn't believe in that hocus pocus. Well, maybe you had better come down off of your high horse and start believing. Because something is definitely not right here. Well, I just can't accept that. I know it's hard to swallow. But we may have to face some facts about something that we know very little about. I know my husband. And he was a good man. And a good Christian. And I will not have his name smeared by some dope up drunk. Besides, what does it really matter anyway? The way they were, something was bound to happen anyway. Why, Lucinda Wright, I don't believe I've ever seen this side of you before. I don't know why this happened, what this has to do with me. They were all there, the boys, when it happened. I don't know what you're saying, what you... It doesn't matter. You know, I never even smoked a drink until that night. And now it's everything. Pills. We need to pray on this. I'm scared. We may be beyond that. These things tend to take care of themselves, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, Vivian. Oh, you will, honey. You will. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean it. 
You know I didn't mean to do it. Why didn't you protect her? I'm sorry. You know, I, I don't know nothing about being a father. You know, the job, you know, some people say they like kids. You know? I, I ain't good at that. I don't know nothing about that. She said she'd take care of herself better than me. I've never been good at nothing. Not one damn time. Are you finished? I think I am. Thirteen years. I barely left this house. It's been misery. Misery. I don't know what else. I don't know. I don't know what else. Your misery is about to end very soon, my dear. And you're wrong. You are good at something. So drink up, James. Drink up. Always talking about what you can't do. I said drink up, James. Drink up. Authorities have now identified the body of James Garfield Black, age 47, found dead of toxic alcohol consumption in his East End home. Toxicology reports his blood alcohol content at 0 .410, more than four times the legal intoxication level. He was estranged from his wife, Ava, and father to one child, Annie, and whereabouts unknown. See, I told you, I told you. Things have to be free. There's some strange stuff going on around here. First it was the mayor, then it was the reverend, and now old man Black. Well, congratulations, Earl Billups. You just won a Nobel Prize for mathematics. <laughs> Joe, just because you blind don't mean you can't get your ass whipped. Just because I'm blind don't mean I can't see. Oh, man, ain't nobody talking about what you can or cannot see. I'm just reading from the newspaper, man. I'm reading the facts. How you know they facts? Well, how you know they ain't? Just cause it's in the paper don't make it facts. Oh. Tell you, you mark my word. This gonna turn out to be something else. Well, whatever it turns out to be, that's not gonna make those guys any less dead. That is the first sensible thing I heard you say in a month of Sundays. Yeah. I will say this one thing, though. No. Why is it they don't know the whereabouts of this room? Where did all that black and stuff come from? Something terrible happened that little girl. Here one day, gone the next. Now all of a sudden, folks are scared to walk through the alleys on the East End at night. <laughs> are you kidding? Man, that's a tale you tell a child to make them run home before the street lights come on. Yeah, it's true. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. My name is Dr. Cornelius Falk. I'm an anthropology professor over at the university. Overheard your conversation. Want to get some more information about the Black Annie legend? <laughs> Afropology professor. <laughs> 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 
We done got us a black Indiana Jones. Anthropology, fool. Indiana Jones was an archaeologist. Look, man, I know that. Just messing with the professor. So please, uh, could you tell me more? Urban Legends, it's part of our curriculum at the college. Ain't much to tell, professor. Unless you believe the story. So it was an accident, you say? Seeing as how I'm about to run for mayor, we can't have this thing hanging over us. Yes, sir. We were just playing around and she fell. I got real scared and didn't know what to do. She wasn't moving anymore, so, I mean, we just put her in the tall grass. That's old man Black's daughter, the drunk that lives in the East End. See, now that's why I don't like you playing with them colored boys. You see what a mess you got me into? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. You're gonna show me where she is. I'm gonna get rid of that body. Yes, sir. Charles, what are you thinking about doing? Were you eavesdropping on me? You stay <laughs> out of my business, woman. I'm not about to jeopardize all this just because my son had an accident with some worthless little colored girl. I'm gonna take care of this. And if you ever breathe a word of this to anybody, as long as you live, so help me, it'll be the last thing you ever do. Junior! Coming, Daddy. <laughs> so you see, son, sometimes these things happen. But it doesn't do anyone any good to belabor the fact. You resolve it, and then you move on. Because in the big scheme of things, this doesn't really matter. You got a poor colored girl and a worthless drunk of a father. Nobody's really gonna care. You understand? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you want me to shake my for you? Yeah. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Yeah. Give it to me. Give it to Carolyn. Right, oh. Sheriff. <laughs> Just wait in the car, Junior. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, God damn. I ain't catch a fucking nut. Who the fuck? Charlie Warren, what the hell are you doing out this hour, huh? You interrupting some serious police business, you know that? We got a situation, Holton. Need your attention. Like, right now, this can't wait. Situation, huh? Situations tend to tie up a man's hours. Taxpayers' money and such. These things can get to be pretty costly if you get what I mean. We can work out the details of that later. Right now, get your dick back in your pants and get your ass out here. I'll be with you shortly. Yep. I definitely say we have us a situation here. I told Jim Black's youngin. Deader than a doornail. Let's get to it. Get this over with. This doesn't bother you one damn bit, does it? Why don't you get soft on me now, Charlie? We in this thing. Ain't no turning back now. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna miss this girl. It's just a... Well, we could always take her back, Charlie. Well, this place is as good as any, I guess. Oh, it'll do. Okay? Everything's gonna be all right. 
Maybe tomorrow we'll go out and buy you something. How would you like a new bike, son? Good night, Dad. Night, son. Vivian, I don't want you asking a bunch of questions till I get this sorted out. You understand? How these niggas drink this shit. <sighs> well, 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 James Black. I got a little yarn for you, tell boy. It goes something like this. Welfare found your little Annie dirty and crying. Well, of course, you know this wasn't the first time, Jim. So I sent her on a bus on down to see Aunt in Georgia. God damn it, Jim. I don't want to hear another word about it. Hate to have to rustle up a pass, you get what I mean. Got a call to the shop fired here, James. I swear, Sheriff, it was an accident. You want to tell me what happened, boy? Huh? Is that there your pistol? This here your pistol? Yes, sir. Is it registered? No, no, no sir. Now, don't you know you can't have a pistol if it ain't registered, boy? Now, you see what kind of situations you get yourself into? Of course, now, if this pistol was registered and uh, you just happened to have it out because you was cleaning and it just happened to go off, yeah. accidents happen from time to time. I reckon I could see to it. You get yourself a registration. It's going to cost you, boy. Yes, sir. I ain't got much money. Just like $25 or $30 over there in that tobacco tin on the fireplace. Ain't your vehicle outside? You got your title? I think you know which direction it's going in. Go fetch it, boy. Sure, please. That's the only thing I got that's worth something. Now, you listen here, boy. I can clean up all this shit and make it go away. Unless your old black ass wants to fry an electric chair worse yet. Spend the rest of your life in penitentiary, you're going to produce that title. Now, time's getting short, boy. Come on, let's go. Pretty little car out there. Step. Now, don't you worry about all the details now. That corner gonna be by directly. Accidents happen from time to time. A nice looking pair of shit kickers you got there, boy. What size are you, about 11? Yes, sir. Ain't that a coincidence? Anybody ask you? That's what you gonna tell them, boy. So you think the legend is true? Can't really tell, not enough information. Something did happen back in 73, though. Too many holes, though. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll um, get that coffee and thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Damn. If I'd have known he was paying, 
I done got me a hand biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's up? What happened was an accident. What we did after was a crime. Man, I ain't did shit. You ever wonder about that little girl? You ever think about her one time? Well, what the fuck for? Your daddy said he was gonna handle it and he did. And what the fuck was I supposed to do? Open up my mouth so that I could end up in fucking Boontown getting my ass beat and fucked every day? Man. We killed that girl. And you know it. Yeah, whatever, man. I mean, y'all turned out all right. Shit, my ass is poor and you don't hear me complaining. You ever wonder why you couldn't keep a woman? Never had any kids? Man, what makes you think it's so good? These cars. These clothes. Yeah, nigga, all that shit. I live here. I eat here, shit here, shave here, and fuck here. I don't go to no Paris and France and all that shit like you big shot niggas. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. Maybe you should have paid attention more in class. What clap. the fuck did you say? <laughs> you heard me. I mean, it seems to me like when you were the big superstar football player, everything was cool. Well, fuck you, you bitch-ass nigga. You don't come to my spot telling me what to do. I'll fuck you up, punk. You want a taste? It'll relax you, bro. I don't want no motherfucking taste. And I ain't your bro, bro. You just messing with you, Drum. How come you gotta be so goddamn hardcore all the time? Cuz, motherfucker, that's all I got. It's the day that I break down and start crying like some little bitch is the day that they cover me with dirt, nigga. We all worked for what we got, Jerome. Yeah, but you had a head start. Family and money and all that shit. All I could do was tote that rabbit. And look what it got me all crippled. And they didn't have the decency to set it right. After all I did for them motherfuckers. Sorry for that, Jerome. You should have been in the NFL. Yeah, real sorry, Mr. Warren. Say, how much that watch set you back? About half of what I make in a month? <laughs> NFL. Yeah, this is my motherfucking NFL. Nigga for life. That's my NFL motherfucker. Jerome, nobody knows what you need until you ask. Yeah, uh, you so good at asking for things since you ain't never had to ask for anything in your life. Hey, look, you see this shit? It don't fix itself. I have things to do. Y'all can let yourself out. My jack stands. You still here? I thought you'd gone home already. I wasn't gonna just leave after everything that happened, Mom. Well, now you know your room's still up there. Baby, I'm going to bed. Okay. Good night. Good night, honey. <clears throat> Those doggone lights. Well, I've been climbing these steps for I don't know how many years. <laughs> if I don't know them away by now, Lucinda. <gasps> you see, son, that's how it's always been. And it's going to always be. There's no sense in fretting yourself over such an insignificant thing. So you knew? Well, of course I knew, son. Nothing happens in this town without me finding out about it. Nothing. Why? I made sure there was no investigation, no trial. Do you think a sociopath like Holton Bundy actually get selected. He is a man with certain talents. And we have to make allowances for that. Keep order. It ain't always pretty. But it is effective. 
This kind of thing happens from time to time, Charlie. Your father did what he thought was best, and so did I. Right. God, I didn't mean it. Just please forgive me. I promise I'll never do anything bad again. I promise. All right. Ready? One, two, three. God forgive us. You sure as hell better hope so. There's one. Whew. That's all you got any more of that whiskey? Thirsty some bitch. It's all an accident. A little girl died, son. That's all we knew. Maybe if she hadn't... What are you trying to say? What's done is done. And there is nothing that you or I can do to change that now. I have to go. I do hope we are over this, son. And by the way, tell your mother I ask about her and that I'll see her in church on Sunday. Have a good evening, Judge. Madge, how's supper coming along? On my way, Judge. It's open, Madge. Get on in here. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that smells delicious. You got my special sauce. Yes, Judge. I have your sauce. Have I ever forgotten your sauce? <laughs> Just keeping you on your toes, Madge. <laughs> well, I gotta go clean them dishes. Do you need anything? Oh, I got everything I need right here. And them dishes can wait. Why don't you just go on home? I don't leave no dirty kitchen. You know that. Just put them in the washer and do it in the morning. I'm expecting company soon, and I'm gonna need a little privacy. Well, suit yourself. I'll be back for breakfast. Oh, uh, that'll be just fine, Madge. Oh, and I got some extra chicken on a biscuit. You might as well go ahead and take one home to the boys. Good night, Judge. Good night. <clears throat> oh, boy. This is so good, and I am so hungry. Well, hell's bells. That gal is early. <laughs> Carolyn? Carolyn? Carolyn Red, is that you? I'm gonna have your ass messing with me around supper time. Good God almighty, it's cold in a well digger's ass in here. Well, I am hungry, and this is one fine piece of meat here. <laughs> Carolyn? Carolyn? Carolyn Red? I gotta give me something to eat. Now listen here, sweetheart. This has all been a big misunderstanding. And that was an awful long time ago. But I was just trying to protect my friend. You got to understand that. What good is this thing gonna do? Please, what can I do to make this right? It would be a shame for this juicy, mouth-watering piece of meat to go to waste. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean it. Let me help you. 
Why is it people are always the most sorry when they get caught? <laughs> oh, look at you, Winston. You've ruined your slacks. But I guess that's the least of your worries now. <laughs> now look at me. Bon appetit. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-three. Young girl mysteriously disappears. Nineteen eighty-six. A series of seemingly connected, gruesome murders. Nineteen ninety-nine. Another series of gruesome murders. Thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. Ooh. Something to think about. Okay, that's it. See you next time. Have a nice weekend, Professor. You too, Miss Boudreau. You too. Mr. Warren? Yes. My name is Dr. Cornelius Falk. I'm an anthropology professor over at the university. I was just wondering if I could ask you a couple of questions. Regarding? The names James Black, Ava Black, do they mean anything to you? No. Should they? Well, it's just that your father and a Reverend Edgar Wright died within 24 hours of each other under mysterious circumstances. And That's a very unpleasant thing to come at a man with, especially on an empty stomach. Whatever happened between my father and Edgar Wright was their business. That was a long time ago. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm a very busy man. Didn't mean to bother you. Don't you think there's something fishy going on? Sure, there's something fishy going on. If that's what you want to believe. It's a matter of convincing yourself that certain vague and esoteric details are congruent. So you can tell me with absolute certainty that there are no connection between these deaths. Yeah. No, I cannot, Professor, nor do I care. I'm not an investigator. I'm not a journalist. There was a time I may have considered myself to be a forensic scientist, but I have seen so many inexplicable deaths. I can't in good faith call myself a scientist anymore. No, Professor, here I am the file clerk of the dead. Dr. Bow, I'm sure that whatever inspired you to become a pathologist, that inquisitive nature, or that thing that makes us want to study, man, we can't discount that. There was a number emblazoned on the right index finger of each victim. A number, faint, but visible, highly visible in the dark. I would never have noticed this. But one night after I'd finished work here and I turned out the light, I felt compelled to turn around to look at the body. And there it was. What'd you think? Well, I thought it was coincidence. 
But then I look back at the autopsy photos of the recent dead, and they all had them. I've been a coroner here in this county for the better part of 30 years. I have done countless autopsies. And you've never seen anything like that. Tell me, what was the number on the last one? The number six. Why? It's a tally count. It's a tally count. What? What do you, what was that? Nothing. Thank you, Doctor. Um, I'll keep you posted. Carson Ball here. Had a visit just a little while ago. A professor from the college wanted some information about the black case. Uh, black? Black, huh? I wouldn't worry too much about that, Carson. Uh, case has been closed years. Yeah, all right, Sheriff. <laughs> about enough of that. Goddamn. Oh, you're such an asshole. Uh, <laughs> you know you love it. Get the fuck out my truck. Jeez. Ugh. Angela. Angela Boudreau? Is that you? Yeah. What are you doing here? You scared the holy shit out of me. Well, I'm sorry, but I followed you, Professor. You did what? I knew you were checking into the urban legend thing, so I just wanted to see. Never mind. Ugh. Did you realize this is trespassing? Don't you know you can get hurt? I'm not afraid. That's beside the point, Angela. Never mind. You're here now. Well, come on if you're coming. Ooh. Hey! <laughs> come down! I'll fail you an anthro. You wouldn't do that to me now, would you? Watch. Time to go. What? Just get your answer. What'd you say?
Well, can I at least have a seat? Sure. Um, help yourself. You need a drink? Yeah, I can use a drink. Thanks, Professor. I'm not 13. What did you say? I said I'm not 13, i.e. I'm not a teenager. When you asked if I wanted a drink, I thought you were talking about a real drink. The floor in the living room by the fireplace, did you see that? I wasn't really paying attention to the floor. No, I didn't see the floor. A number 13, you didn't see it. The coroner said that there was a series of bodies that were numbered sequentially, which could suggest that they're all victims. Wow, this thing's got you really worked up. Huh? Yeah, it's just something I feel. Something I've never felt before. Could it be this? Intense drink. Well, that was awful. Oh god. Except for the first part, it was pretty good. Man. What happened? Uh well, it, at first it was like you and me and we were, you know, it didn't really feel like a dream. Mm. But damn. Body started stacking up. Okay. God damn, I need a drink. I'll get that drink. Oh, okay. You just relax. You're welcome. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> make a damn good drink. How'd you know I like vodka and cranberry? I saw the vodka and I saw the cranberry. 
Stick it as a hint. <sighs> oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so, I mean, as I was saying. You were saying something about me and you and some bodies? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Professor? You know, it, it just doesn't make sense, though, because what I saw in the dream. What if, what if I told you that you and I had the same dream? Would it make sense to you then? Angela, people don't have the same dreams. Who are you? A friend. Look, yeah, just fuck it. Hey, you know, this shit ain't working. Hey, let's get the fuck out of here. Sorry about that, Jerome. I wouldn't worry about it. It happens sometimes. Yeah, but I still gotta pay your ass, don't I? Yeah, I still gotta eat too, baby. Good as new. Jerome? Jerome, pick up the phone. Maybe I know you're there. This is your mother, baby, I can see. Jerome, pick up the phone. Sylvia, how are you? Good. Okay, so it's just a little something, but I know you said you were going to start exercising more, so I got you this. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's perfect. You like it? I love it. Thank you. You're just uh, leave the door open. I'm getting ready to go to lunch. the details,
Wasn't expecting rain today. Funny how it just got cloudy. Funny kind of clouds too. Only happens so often. Yep. Look like all hell about to break loose out there. Might be right about that. Some brewing for sure. Oh, Negro Damas. Here you go. What you talking about, Willis? What date that calendar say, Earl Billups? October 13th, 1999. I ain't a complete fool, Earl. I know what year it is. What day did that boy's daddy die on? You remember? Look, I don't keep track of no white folks dying. I don't even keep track of niggas. Can't you just say black folks? Point is, that boy died on the same day. October 13th, 86. Now, I don't care what you don't remember. But folks, don't forget October 13th. Yep. Man, you talk about it like it's Christmas or New Year's. So you seriously think that this is more than coincidence? There's some connection? Well, what you think, Professor? You've been working over at the college all these years. I'm sure you've been doing some investigating. That's what you do, ain't it? Hmm. See you gentlemen later. Gotta get while the getting is good. It is a trip and everything. How they die on the same day? You don't know what he talking about. All that speculating he do, he'd have been a whiz at the stock market. Well, let's just see how it play out then. Mr. I ain't going nowhere, ain't doing nothing, and ain't been nowhere. Start getting news flashes in the middle of the afternoon in the next couple of days. Then we can talk about it. Let's just see. Don't need eyes to see Earl Phillips. Yeah. You're in the handicap zone, sugar. Well, I'm sorry, officer. I didn't realize I was. It's a major violation. So what can we do to take care of that? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I reckon we could work something out. Mm. Yeah, come on. All right. things you've never seen before. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like the sound of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me play some big old titties, oh, you got. There'll be plenty of time for that. You just relax. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it right there. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got me a real tiger here. Oh, oh, oh now the balls. Oh, the balls. I guess you won't be needing these anymore. We're just taking a walk, old Duke and me, like we do every morning. Come up over that ravine there, and that's when we found him. What in the name of Jesus would call somebody to do something like this? Don't know, Sheriff. Ain't ever seen nothing like that in all my days. Chewed up worse than a bag of beech nut or old piece of shoe leather. Yeah, this is something else here. What's the matter, girl? Can't 
catch your tongue. Victim is covered with multiple lacerations, including severe trauma to the glossolingua, in which said glossolingua has been extracted from the oral cavity. Cause of death could be ruled as drowning, but not to exclude massive hematoma to groin, in which the genital organs have been completely removed. Yes, who is this? My name is uh, Cornelius Falk. Uh, Dr. Cornelius Falk? I'm an uh, anthropologist over at the university. I understand the body of Sheriff Holton Bundy was brought in today. I was wondering... Doctor. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to divulge any information and or evidence to outside parties regarding subjects under examination. Unless you are investigating the case or have sufficient warrant I know, I know. I, I, I'm not trying to compromise any ethical codes or get anyone in trouble. I, I just wanted to know if you could tell me one simple little thing. Is there a number on the tip of his right index finger? Ten. All I gotta say is that bastard was running on borrowed time. Yeah. What about them boys, though? An old man ball. He done probably done a million all types of himself. End up in the morgue dead. Sounds awful suspicious. Joe Willis, that's about the most interesting thing you said. Remind me to get you a cookie. <laughs> I like your suit. I like a man who dresses well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you believe that I paid more than a thousand dollars for this suit? I always wanted to say I have a thousand dollar suit. That's funny, isn't it? I guess so. If you can afford it. What is it that you do? Nothing. Well, I mean, I, I have a job. The pay is retarded. I just don't feel like I do anything. Not really. Uh, but I did go to Princeton. Hmm. I, I don't suppose I'll have it much longer, though. Say, we, we've got to, we've got to get you a drink. Uh, whatever she wants, and, and a double for me. Apple teeny, please. Hmm. Now, what was I saying before I so rudely interrupted myself? What the hell was I talking about? Something about losing your job. Ah, yes. That. You see, it's not like I'm going to lose my job. It's more like I'm going to lose my life. You see, I was a very bad boy. And now, it's time to pay the pipe. I'm sorry, I think this is a bad idea. Oh, yes, oh, hey, this, this is a bad idea. You're right, yes, you, you're a very sexy woman and I wanna fuck you very, very much, but this is a very bad idea. You, You'd better get, get while the getting's good. And don't forget your drink! You look like you've got a lot on your mind. You don't know the half of it.
What a lovely day today. Sunshine for miles. You know what? I think I'm gonna go fishing this afternoon. Yeah. Better take your raincoat and your goulashes, lest you won't get drenched. Raincoat? Goulashes? Drenched? It ain't supposed to rain. Extended forecast said it's gonna be clear all week. Go on in. Won't make a wasted trip. Then again, you ain't had a bath all week. May not be a wasted trip. Better take heed to what he say, Earl. You know he ain't never known Joe to be wrong when it comes to predicting the weather. Yeah. Well, looky here. When I come back with a mess of catfish this afternoon, y'all. Well, I. You ain't seen the half of it. Oh, that does not look good. Honey, that baby is crying. Honey? Now I'll get it. <laughs> 